Welcome, everyone. I hope you're here for the Flux project update. Um, we're going to get started now. My name is Kingdon Barrett. I'm a, uh, at Weaveworks. I'm an open source support engineer, and I'm a Flux maintainer. And uh, this is my coworker and co-maintainer, Santochi. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello. My name is Santochi Onyekori. Um, I'm a developer experience engineer at Weaveworks and a Flux maintainer. And we're just going to talk today about um, the state of Flux. We're, um, it's going to be fairly informal. Um, questions will be welcome at any time. And uh, let's get started. Sure. So um, the latest Flux update, I think, was Monday. Flux 0 0.36. And this uh, update, and my understanding, it rounds out our integration with Cosign. So now, if you want to verify your sources before you apply them to the cluster, you can use Cosign to do that, whether they are Helm charts or not, whether they're customized overlays. So this is big, big news, and it's great. Um, there's support for uh, both keyed and keyless Cosign integration. And uh, we have a list of other OCI-related features. I didn't mention OCI there, but the, uh, the bit that makes it work together with customized manifests is the OCI um, repository source support that was added in a few releases prior. Uh, so there's been a flurry of releases in the last few months. And I wanted to point, yep, I think it was that one, yep. Uh, this blog post that was it's the top one on the fluxcd.io slash blog right now has uh, the progression from 0 0.31 to 0 0.36. And uh, you can see at this top, or hopefully you can see, is this large enough? Here, do you want this one? Um, so we started uh, adding support for Helm repositories of type OCI, which has been a long time coming. Uh, people have been asking for that feature for a long time, and it was unblocked by Helm, who brought that feature out of experimental and put it into the SDK where we could access it. So uh, that was added in June. And in August, we added uh, support for uh, customized overlays and also Terraform code. Um, in OCI artifacts. So what that means is you can take your manifests out of the Git repository, uh, which may be a mono repo, it may be expensive to clone and clone again, and you can push them to an OCI repository, uh, very similar to an image repository, similar standard, uh, but capable of holding all different kinds of formats of uh, media types. So. Uh, you load your manifests into an OCI repository, and then they have the contextual semantics of like an image. Uh, so you can use the features of Flux that are related to images for manifests, which has been another uh, difficult area in the past. So, um, uh, we can talk about. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, we've also updated um, the Flux CLI to also help you push, if you, if you sort of have a folder containing this manifest, right, um, there's a Flux push active um, OCI command that helps you to push or pull. If, if you've already pushed an image, you can easily pull it with the Flux CLI. So basically, it would probably be most useful in your CI. Maybe you want to do a release, so you could use the Flux CLI to say Flux push this directory into this OCI image and push it um, to your OCI repository. So in the succeeding releases, we've added a few more um, features for configurability with OCI um, and OCI artifacts and repositories. Uh, you can read more about that. I'm um, not exactly sure what the details of those are. Do you know? Which one? Uh, 33 and 34 here. Oh, okay. It just means um, at first um, we expected the OCI in, in like the first layer of the image, right? That was like our first iteration of OCI. So it, it needed to be like the first image. But now we've added some, you could specify um, some metadata for it to be able to find which layer that the, the manifest in. Basically, it just makes it more flexible, right? You don't have to package it as the very first one, so 
that's basically like we're extending the features. Yep. And then in uh, 0 0.35, the support for verifying uh, cosine signatures on OCI artifacts, those flux push OCI artifact uh, artifacts was added. And then in the following release now, as I've mentioned before, you can also verify Helm charts that way. So, ah, sense card Janus. Welcome. Do you want to come up? We might uh, need an extra mic uh, if we have a moment for. Yeah. Could you? yeah. Uh, so. So we cosine. Um, there are two ways you could use, like Kingdom mentioned earlier, keyed and keyless. Basically, we cosign. You could generate keys, or they have um, supports for keyless um, verification of like your container images, where it uses something like a GitHub token to instead of you, you know, provisioning like a private and public key, you don't need to do like the key management for you. Basically, that's like the keyless feature we cosign. So if you're using the key or keyless feature, um, Flux allows you to verify your artifact either ways. So I want to highlight uh, another thing that we've been working on is growing our contributor pool. We'd like to add more contributors uh, of different standing in the community, like uh, end user contributors. Uh, you can join the Flux community in a variety of different ways, uh, but we have this contributor ladder now that we've added in the last year, uh, where instead of having uh, such a wide gap between um, person on the street and, you know, GitHub star giver, maybe that's a nice thing that you can do. Actually, please give us a star on GitHub, go to flux cd slash flux2 and add one. It would be great. Uh, but, you know, you'd like to do more than that maybe, or maybe you've already done more than that, and we want to recognize that if you're part of the Flux community. So we have this project member status now that you can apply for. Um, you need two sponsors. Uh, they should be from two different companies. Uh, if, you, if you know a Flux maintainer or another Flux project member, anyone can be a sponsor. Um, and uh, we, we'd like to see as many people uh, are using Flux join us in the community and give us feedback. That would be great. So um, any kind of contribution really is welcome. And uh, we feel like you all here are pretty in a pretty good state to contribute to Flux because you know what's good with Flux and also what's wrong with Flux, or what Flux fails to get right. So if you have any ideas about, you know, oh, Flux should be doing this instead of this, or, you know, it'd be great if Flux could do that as well. Like, just, you know, try to create issues. Even that is a form of contribution. So we we'd really appreciate that as well. I think we also want to highlight that hopefully no one here is using version one of Flux, but we will be archiving the repo really soon. Um, I think we're still running migration workshops for people who want to migrate from the first Flux V1 to V2. Um, we've put in a lot of work to make sure there's feature parity between the two. And of course, V2 has been getting all the good new stuff. So if you're still on V1, please migrate. You could um, come around the Flux boots if you want uh, more details on like joining in on the migration workshop. So here's another thing on the website I want to highlight. This is the Flux roadmap. You can see right at the top, the focus is on production readiness, and um, we're moving in the direction of GA. We should hopefully be able to re release GA soon, for certain definitions of soon. Um, we'll hopefully be graduating soon also. We have an application for graduation in the CNCF. We're hoping to open up the comment period um, as soon as KubeCon is over. Yeah, they decided that uh, we, we, they can't do it before KubeCon, so we have to wait until KubeCon gets over, and then they'll open the, the comment period. There's a lot of work that goes into KubeCon, and a lot of the people who are, um, their comments are necessary to make the uh, graduation process uh, meaningful. You know, we want to give space for them to think and give us meaningful feedback. So uh, that was a decision that the CNCF TOC made, and uh, we're looking forward to going and moving towards graduation very soon. I think we also have a formalized R RFC process now. Um, you could check slash RC folder in the Flux V2 repo. So you could see if you have a feature request, you we've basically formalized the process of, you know, 
submitting an RFC, getting reviews, getting it approved, tracking, tracking the various pull requests related to that RFC. So you could take a look to know oh, what are the current features we're trying to add in, or if you have something to add, you can also create an RFC. You can see here on the roadmap, uh, there are a few of the RFCs that we've already added. There are a few here for OCI. You can see whether they've been completed or not. I have a few more down here uh, towards security and a few that haven't been finalized, uh, given a number yet. Uh, they, I think they get a number once they're accepted as an RFC by the Flux community, so. And also, so one of the RFCs, like two of the RFCs, I think, are about multi-density, and they're right now blocked because, I mean, we, we can't reach a general consensus, or we, if we, even if we can, we're finding difficulties. So if you want to voice your opinion how we how you want to see multi-tenancy shape up in Flux, you feel, feel free to like comment in the RFC or just reach out in the Slack or you know join a community meeting and bring up your concerns about how you want to do multi-tenancy in Flux. Yeah, uh, Sanskar just used the word um, consensus. By the way, uh, for folks who are not familiar with the Flux governance model, it's a little bit different than some other projects in the CNCF, uh, where maybe a vote is necessary for any decision. Uh, in the Flux model, we actually try to obtain consensus from the entire group of maintainers um, who are involved in the decision. So if there isn't consensus, uh, generally we won't move forward um, until there is consensus. We think that we should have consensus and, uh, you know, broad consensus rather than a tenuous uh, vote-driven consensus. Um, what should we talk about next? Are there any questions at this yeah. point? Okay. okay. Uh, we could talk about the uh, various Git improvements we have made over the last few months. Uh, so as you know, uh, Git can be a bit tricky to get right because uh, you have SSH and HTTP. And what we have worked on uh, over the past few months is improving our support for Git. Uh, so we have uh, made it basically easier to contribute to any, any of our Git packages. So if you go to fluxcd slash package, there is a Git package now. Uh, so earlier it used to be a bunch of spaghetti code. Uh, so for the last two, three months, we have been trying to refactor all of this out into a much more uh, good looking shape. And we have also, if, uh, People are, uh, you know, like reading up on Flux after a long time. Uh, DevOps, uh, Azure DevOps, and Git uh, AWS Code Commit support that has been improved uh, significantly because we have made some changes to how we clone repositories using libgit2. So that that uh, majorly improves clone speeds and also memory and CPU usage. So you should. So if you are upgrading from something like, I don't know, point, 0.25 or something, if you haven't upgraded, upgraded your Flux installation in a long time. And if you upgraded it to like, I think 0.36 is the current one, 0.36, yeah. Uh, so if you upgrade it, uh, you'll choose to see a, a major difference in uh, time taken to clone repositories and overall CPU and memory usage of source controller. So I, I think um, if you use like Azure DevOps or AWS code commit, um, there's a PR out to basically, um, um, for those that use it, you know that we have a Git implementation field where you need to specify libgit2 uh, because that's what work with, works with those repositories, but there's been a PR out to make you work with go Git, which is the usual default. So if you'd like to test it out, it's, it's not in the release yet, but we have a pull request open and there's an image posted there. So if you, you know, like to try out our new stuff, you could go on there and test it out on your um, home clusters or whatever and give us some feedback. So the RC is out. I, we can just pull it up. So like if you, uh, if you ever want to like uh, try some bleeding edge stuff, so we usually post our uh, RCs on the Flux contributors channel on Slack. So if you want to try out some bleeding edge stuff and you know, help us figure out whether we are moving in the right direction, uh, please try to use those RCs, uh, RC images as well. Uh, you could easily do that using a customization patch. You know which one? Yeah. Oh, it's this go yeah. get? Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's this PR. I, I don't think we published an RC yet, but we will soon. So it's this is the PR which enables uh, 
go get for uh, Azure DevOps and uh, Code Commit as well. So with that, you should see uh, much more stable clones because uh, this is like very uh, into the weeds kind of thing. But Go Git is written completely in Golang. Uh, but there is another thing which we use called libgit2, which is written in C. So because obviously all source, con source control and all our controllers in Golang, we are forced to use C Go to have like bindings between libgit2 and our controllers, which is uh, painful to say the least. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so so we are looking forward to this as well. So this, if so, if this uh, gets in right now, it's draft, and we are like still discussing it over. But if this gets in, you should see uh, much more stable uh, controllers, especially in image image automation controllers. So I I don't know how many of you here are running image automation controllers. Oh, okay, not as many as expecting, but okay. So uh, if you've noticed, sometimes it tends to crash every now and then. You know, it's it restarts. Uh, that is because of the Seago stuff, so hopefully that will go away as well. Sorry, just a quick check-in that we should, that don't understand. Is there anyone here who is hearing about Flux for the first time? Okay, okay, we have okay. a couple of new people. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. So yeah, sorry we just sort of got right into it, but um, Flux is a tool for GitOps. Hopefully you know what GitOps is. GitOps is basically um, declaratively defining your YAMLs in a version control system, the most popular of which is Git, and you know, Flux sits in your cluster and continuously reconciles the state you've defined in your Git repository to what is defined on the cluster. So just a quick overview of the controllers that we've been talking about. Um, source controller is for pulling in the YAMLs wherever you've defined it. Um, so, so far, we you could keep them in Git repositories, S3 buckets, of course we also work with Helm, so we also have support for Helm repositories. And the newest thing that we're talking about is the OCI repository, right? For those who have, haven't heard about OCI before, it's this new spec image um, spec by the Open Container Initiative. So basically, the part of it that we're using in Flux lets you package artifacts, basically files, in your images. Just the same way you store your images in Git, um, you can store them in your, in your images in container registries. So if this maybe fits your use case, you could package up your YAMLs that you want to deploy into your OCI images. Um, and of course, Flux, this is a pr pretty new thing. And it's not pretty new, but not a lot of people are doing it. So Flux provides you know, command line tooling for you to be able to do that in your CI, CD. And it's part of what, what we were talking about earlier. Um, for you to be able to package up this manifest and push it to your image repository. So the source controller also supports pulling OCI repositories. Um, customize and Helm are, are what we call appliers. Basically, they, they apply what source controller pulls in on the cluster. So if you are already using Customize or Helm, um, this will fit right into your workflow. Uh, the last three are the notification controller, which is basically for giving you updates in Slack, Discord. It could also post back to Git. Um, the commit status notification, the blue check you have bef beside your commits, Flux could also give you an update there, just so you could look at it and know that, oh, this commit deployed successfully. Um, the last two are the image repository and image automation controllers, which is basically for posting back to Git. When, let's say, your CI deploys a new, tag, a new image tag, basically Flux can help you. Instead of you going in there and trying to just update the image tag, um, Flux could do that for you. So that's just a quick rundown. There's not a lot of new people, but yeah, we are always happy to see new faces. So broadly, about the image automation, I just wanted to say, um, since image update automation is fairly complicated to get set up, I want to make it clear for everyone there's at least three different types of automation that we're talking about when we say automation in Flux. The first one is the basic continuous reconciling pull automation that is described in the GitOps principles. So there is a Git repository. We need to pull it periodically to see if there's a change. And when the change comes, we want to pull it into the cluster and notify anybody who's waiting to see if there's a change so that they can reconcile immediately and get our update. So that's the uh, entry level automation that you get with Flux when you first install it. And the second type of automation that I would talk about is the image update automation that we've already mentioned. This is an automation that will help you commit a change to your repository when a new image comes. And 
the OCI support for automation for uh, artifacts means now that you can use this type of automation with manifests, where before you could only use it with application images. So um, the way that this works is you write a comment in your YAML file that marks the line. It's called a KYAML setter. Um, and there's probably a good guide that we can show the example of. Um, and when you do that, and you connect the image API resources in the, in the fashion as described here in this automate image update guide, uh, you'll get a commit every time Flux notices a new image. Uh, so this can be a bit uh, clunky, depending on your workflow. Like maybe, maybe this is exactly what you wanted because you have an audit requirement or because you have a rollback requirement and you need to be able to see a commit that you can roll back every time a change comes that is not good or so on. Uh, but the third type of automation that uh, maybe gets overlooked an awful lot is um, the source automation. And so this is actually a lot simpler to configure than the um, image update automation. It doesn't create a commit in the repo, um, or it doesn't spam your repo with commits, this may be another way to say it. Uh, what it will do, it will just monitor for those things according to a policy that you set. Uh, so let's look at the source uh, in the toolkit components, source controller. We look at the git repository source. There's a similar section in the OCI repository source. You see the spec describes what, what is it that we're going to pull. And this one points at a ref for a branch master. So every time Flux reconciles, it's going to pull that branch, see if there's something new there, and update the artifact so that the downstreams can get it. But you don't have to pull from a branch. There are a lot of different ways to write the spec. You can write it with a tag. A tag. And also a sambo range. So if you want to make sure that you're always pulling from 1.0 point something or 1.0.3, whatever is the latest for you, you, sh you can do that. Uh, like Flux can filter out tags based on a summer policy that you can define. And here's an example of that. Um, you imagine this says 1.2.x or an actual summer range. You can use greater than, less than symbols. The reference here that's linked is the uh, mastermind semver, so you can see uh, exactly what types of things you can say to get a different range of images, or uh, maybe you just want any image, you can put a star in there, and you'll get the latest semver uh, that's a so release. Yeah. I wanted to ask some uh, people here, who here is evaluating, <coughs> sorry, who here is evaluating using something other than YAML for your configs? So like, I don't know, Qlang, or some kind of a JSON net kind of thing. So. Okay, so there is a very good use case that we have uh, uh, kind of you know published here uh, with OCI support. Uh, so instead of so right now, if you look at the state of Flux, uh, it's pretty simple. You have uh, a repository which has which has to have a YAML manifest, right? Like some deployment or cluster IP services, right? Source controller will pull it, and customized controller will apply it. Uh, but what happens is that if you wanna basically use something like Qlang, right, for to define your uh, Kubernetes state instead of YAML. Uh, with OCI, that's possible. Uh, so how that works is that uh, you have, you define your Qlang files, right, in, uh, in a Git repository. And what happens is uh, every time you push it, uh, so every, time you, every time you push a change to your Git repository, you can have a CI process, right? That CI process can uh, basically you, in that CI process, you can do like a Qlang build, so which will output the YAML that the Qlang actually uh, that the Qlang files will output, right? And that that those YAML files can be packaged and using what Sumtoshi described using the CLI, right? You can do a Flux build, which will package those YAML files as an as an OCI artifact, and then you can do a Flux push, which will push it to a, a registry, an image registry, right? And then you can have an OCI repository uh, object in your cluster. So source controller will look at that Git repository and so say that, oh, there's a push here, so let me know re reconcile stuff because a change has happened. And then you have this OCI repository as well. So like, and that actually you know, gets the YAML files, right? So now you have, you have a Git repository. You're declaring your Kubernetes state not using YAML, using Qlang or you know, whatever JSON net, right? But Flux can actually understand that 
because of this uh, compatibility with OCI because you can actually, you know, just like get the YAML out and give it to Flux uh, in CI because Flux doesn't care where it comes from as long as it, it's available to it, it can reconcile it. So yeah, so that's a pretty good use case. And if you want to discuss more, we can talk about it more. So in general, OCI unblocks a lot of use cases regarding, as Kendall mentioned, even like monorepos. So if you have like a giant monorepo which has like a, uh, I don't know, a Git history, and it's like it takes, it's like 200 MB in size. So it can take, so clones can take like, you know, more time, it can take more CPU, it can take more uh, bandwidth, right? So you can also use OCI repository to help mitigate those kind of issues as well. So yeah, we're really excited about the OCI support that has landed in Flux. Yeah. Any questions so far? Any questions? You are welcome to interrupt us at any point. Just raise up your hand. Um, we, this is like very informal. We are so okay. That's a question. Uh, so I noticed a lot of your Bootstrap documentation has uh, just Flux being installed via the like, or I'm sorry, uh, the cluster being Bootstrapped via the Flux CLI. Uh, do you guys have plans, or what are those plans uh, to support like things like Terraform installs and stuff like that? Oh, nice. We we have a, ter a Flux Terraform provider. Um, maybe yeah. pull up the repo. Yeah. So the Flux Terraform provider, uh, it's actually Terraform Provider Flux is the name of it here. Oh, I didn't know that. And it is um, sort of sits between the Git repository provider and the file provider in the way I understand it. Maybe that's accurate. Um, and um, this is one way that you can install Flux. And also just to uh, mention, this is also getting like uh, some refactoring. So like, so some of the existing issues that we know with it, so like Philip, who's a maintainer who's not here right now, he, he works at, I think, Zenit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so he's uh, making some uh, good changes to this uh, telephone provider, so it'll be even better in the next version. What about Flux? Like, same question. Pardon? Same question. What about Flux? Oh, is there a Flux provider for Close Pain? Oh, no, don't we don't so have that moment. yet. You could contribute if you, could, if you want, if you could contribute that. But yeah. yeah, we're always welcome to. New contributions, yeah. For anyone who has not done Bootstrap before or doesn't quite understand from end to end what Bootstrap is all about, um, there's, uh, I'm trying to get all these correct, but correct me if I skip a step. Um, when you run Bootstrap, the first thing it does is it checks if the repo exists, and if it does not exist, it will create it for you using the API. And the next thing that it does is it pushes a definition to that repo uh, well, it pushes a deploy key, I think, uh, and a definition for Flux itself uh, so that Flux can be managed from the repo. Uh, so the idea is that if you want to have a closed loop, one of the rarely uh, quoted principles of GitOps, because it's not in the official list, then uh, you can do that. So after that deploy key is in place, um, the uh, bootstrap process will install Flux from that definition and then it will add uh, Flux system, uh, Git repository, and customization, uh, and start them so that you have uh, GitOps running on your cluster. Yeah. And also, uh, I just want to quickly ask how many of you, how, like, what does your update process look like? How do you update Flux? Do you, are you listening for change, log, change logs, or uh, how, how regularly do you update Flux? Just like, uh, like, less than every two weeks or just do randomly like, oh, let's update Flux. It's been a long time. Okay. So <laughs> we always recommend you to be on the latest because uh, they're just like, you know, we push out so many security fixes every now and then. Uh, so this is a GitHub action that you can put in your Git repository, which has the Flux manifest, uh, which basically uh, enables Flux to update itself. So Flux can auto-update whenever there is a new change. So this runs, this runs a cron job, uh, I think, every day. Uh, I think every night, right? Every hour here is every the hour, way it's configured, yeah. yep. So this one's a cron job, which basically checks if there's a new Flux release, and it will then tell your current installation of Flux in your cluster to get the, get the new release and then auto-update itself. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons that the uh, Terraform provider is not always on the top of the list when we talk about ways to install Flux, because we like for Flux to be able to manage itself and we'd like for people to be able to manage Flux with GitOps, uh, which now it's also possible through Terraform, thanks to the Terraform controller, 
Uh, but that, that's a whole other presentation. We're running out of time today. So uh, Terraform Controller is not officially part of the Flux CD projects. It's a project by Weaveworks, but it is built on the GitOps toolkit, and it is open source. Um, so please check that out as well. Um, how many of you, uh, uh, is, uh, is anyone using Flagger here as well? Okay, two. Yeah, we've got three. some Flagger users. Oh, nice. Hey, um, I just want to ask you about this specific workflow. Um, you update this Flux manifest and then you create a pull request so that when this pull request is approved, then another workflow will run that performs the update, or am I right? So, no, so this creates, so like Flux is, installation itself is stored in the GitHub repository, mm -hmm. right? That Flux itself is reconciled. So it's, it's sort of a loop. If you think about it, like it can get like a bit inception-y. Like it's a sort of a loop, right? So, so Flux's state is also in the GitHub repository. So what this action will do is it will check, you know, whether there's a, like a new release. So, that, so the new changes uh, are pulled and then a pull request is open to the GitHub repository which has the Flux manifests, right? So when you hit the merge button on that PR, that change will be merged into your, like, let's say, main branch, yeah. which is supposed to be, re and then the, it's the current installation of your Flux on your cluster will notice key, uh, that there is a change in my main branch, so let me pull that change and reconcile that. And then Flux will auto update itself because, you know, the yeah. changes are now in GitHub, right? They okay, yeah, this is what I meant, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's why the PR, right? Like. It's not a, it doesn't push, it, it creates a PR, so you can review the changes. Yeah. A related question to the previous one, and you mentioned, is there a Flux way of de install the Flux bootstrapping process? So, or, so very, um, before you upgrade, worry about the upgrade of Flux itself, um, the very initial install of Flux agent in uh -huh. the clusters, is there a Flux way of doing that? Yeah, there is the most Flux way. There are multiple ways you can install Flux in a cluster. The most Flux way, I would say, is using the CLI. So there is a Flux CLI. So you give it a kubeconfig, which, which is pointed towards your Kubernetes cluster. And then you run Flux Bootstrap. So that will essentially do everything Kingdom talked about. It will inst it will pull up the it will create a GitHub repository for you if you if one does not exist, and then it will pull up the manifests and then it will apply those manifests and install Flux for you on the cluster. That is I would say that is the most recommended way. If anyone yeah, yeah. has more questions, if you have any questions, list. We reach, have the Flux, us before the the Flux booth talk. and there's the CNCF Flux channel where you can reach us. Um, and thanks everyone for coming today. Yeah. I hope Thank you have a great you. KubeCon. Yeah. Thank you.